preparing the communique of the judiciary's ends of courts consultative meeting and I begin with the ends of superior courts of Kenya representing the Supreme Court, the Court of Appeal, the High Court, the Employment and Labor Relations Court, and the Environment and Land Court, participated in the ends of court consultative meeting here in Naivasha from the 18th to 21st February 2024. Affirming the provisions of Article 161 of the Constitution that the exercise of judicial authority shall be subject only to the Constitution and to the law and that the judiciary shall not be subject to the control or direction of any person or authority. We also appreciated the need for regular engagement in meaningful dialogue, in sharing insights, and collectively addressing the challenges that the judiciary is facing, and also the larger administration of justice. Mindful that judicial authority is donated by the people of Kenya and should be exercised in a manner that serves the society and protects the Constitution. Aware that the Constitution protects the decision autonomy of judges and recognizing the need for the judiciary to engage in constructive dialogue with other branches and agencies of the government to address and resolve challenges that arise in the course of the administration of justice. We also acknowledged that there are time sensitive matters that should be accorded priority in their determination by our courts, by their very nature that they touch the larger members of the public. Conscience of the current challenges hindering the hearing and the timely disposal and determination of those time sensitive matters. Recognizing also the need to address these challenges through a multi-pronged approach including through regular consultative meetings and re re peer review mechanisms. We are also desirous to establish and maintain an efficient case and judgment management system for those public interest matters, also to enhance proactive actions, to entrench integrity and accountability in the administration of justice, and the incorporation of technology to streamlining service delivery. Drawing from the themes of introspection on procedural rules in public interest matters, the concept of matters of general public interest, active case management and judgment management, also the issue of fight against corruption, upholding the independence of the judiciary while harnessing intergovernmental collaboration and leveraging on technology for excellence in delivery of service, we now make the following solutions, uh, resolutions. One, streamlining the court process. The superior courts will endeavor to accord priority to time-sensitive cases to ensure their conclusion in a timeliest manner whilst respecting the principle that justice must be done to all irrespective of status. Two, recognizing the need to review and update the Constitution of Kenya, Protection of Rights and Fundamental Freedoms Practice procedure rules which were enacted in 2013 
to take into account contemporary developments that have taken place over the last 10 years and to introduce timelines to various processes, I, the Chief Justice, will take action to initiate a process to review these laws and these rules. I, as the Chief Justice, will also endeavor to optimize the capacity of the Constitutional and Human Rights Division and Judicial Review Division of the High Court once the new judges have been recruited. We have recognized the shortage of the human resource capital in those two divisions. Four, to promote the general awareness of judges and to ensure that judicial decisions are not personalized. The Office of the Chief Justice will also endeavor to ensure regular rotation of judges to ensure all judges are accorded an opportunity of serving in stations and divisions that handle high numbers of public interest matters. The principal judge of the High Court, in consultation with the judges of the High Court, will continue to undertake rapid results initiatives involving the distribution of the time-sensitive matters in the constitutional and human rights and commercial divisions of the High Court using the innovation that we call Mahakama Popote model for expeditious disposal of uh, those disputes. As an exception to the first hand in, first out practice that we do in the Court of Appeal, the Court of Appeal will also endeavor to fast track the hearing and determination of appeals relating to time sensitive matters. While recognizing the great role played by the small claims courts in our country in transforming the landscape of determining these commercial disputes, we take note of the emerging challenges facing the court's efforts and we are pursuing uh, solutions to streamline the operations of the small claims courts. Ladies and gentlemen, we also discussed active case management and judgment management. And we agreed, one, the superior courts will enhance the docket management system to streamline case management. Two, to ensure efficiency to tackle the problem of delays in the conclusion of cases, the superior courts will enforce as far as possible the no adjournment policy. Litigants and stakeholders in the justice sector are urged to embrace the no adjournment policy as adjournments will be granted only in the most exceptional circumstances. Number three, we are calling upon our stakeholders in the justice sector because we do not work alone to support and work with the judiciary in enhancing our efforts towards expeditious disposal of disputes. The Superior Court will continue to promote the uptake and use of alternative forms of disputes, the solution which is working very well in all our court stations. The Court of Appeal will undertake a case audit of appeals and applications where the court has granted stay of proceeding orders with a view to fast track the hearing and determination of those uh, pending matters. The High Court will undertake a rapid results initiative, which they have been doing regularly, to prepare the records of appeal to enable fast tracking of the criminal appeals at the Court of Appeal. The Office of the Chief Registrar of the Judiciary will streamline the process of transfer of staff with a view to ensuring that each court station is optimally staffed to support judicial process, including with adequate numbers of 
court interpreters. We have also addressed the issue of the fight against corruption and how we can enhance our accountability and seamless service delivery. In this, we want to restate that the judiciary abhors corruption in all its forms and is committed to promote and enforce the principle of zero tolerance to corruption. The Judiciary and the Judicial Service Commission shall continue to invest in agile and effective communication systems, including updates and processing of complaints to deal with real or perceived cases of corruption in the judiciary. The Judiciary and the Judicial Service Commission shall continue to pursue an evidence-based approach in proactively dealing with issues of corruption. We also discussed on how we can continue to uphold the independence of the judiciary while harnessing intergovernmental collaboration. And we took cognizance of the continued threats to the independence of the judiciary through verification and criticism of judges. We have also taken notes with concern of the continued disobedience of court orders and denial of adequate resources to the judiciary to be able to undertake our work. And we urge Kenyans to continue supporting the independence of the judiciary. All Kenyans, state officers and state organs and agencies are required to respect and obey court orders in recognition of the constitutional entrenchment of the rule of law and democracy as a national value and principle. The judiciary will collaborate and work with other arms of government in the spirit of interdependence, reciproca reciprocation, however, the other arms of government must also respect the independence of the judiciary. There shall be more interaction between the judiciary and other arms of government to communicate the needs of the judiciary without interfering with the independence of the judiciary in the spirit of cooperative dialogue. The judicial function is a core constitutional mandate which should be adequately funded. The judiciary continues to face the challenges of underfunding. Therefore, there is need for continued engagement with other actors and stakeholders to pursue constitutional and legal, amend legal amendments to ring fence the budget of the judiciary and strengthen and streamline the operations of the Judiciary Fund. There shall be a review of the Judicial Service Act and other statutes in order to clarify the mandate of the judiciary vis-a-vis -vis the Judicial Service Commission and so as to align all our operations with the Constitution. We looked into the use of technology and how we can enhance technology as an enabler to access to justice. And appreciating the need to leverage on technology and efficiency, the ends of court endorse the implementation of the Judiciary Data Tracking Dashboard to enable real-time monitoring of the court activities and outputs and trends analysis into the performance of courts to facilitate data-informed decision-making. To tackle the challenge of data integrity, ends of court endorse the enhancement of capabilities of the case tracking system, including <coughs> automation of the automated daily court reporting. The directions or the Directorate of Information and Communication and Technology 
is directed to sensitize judges and judicial officers on the enhanced capabilities of our court case tracking system. At this meeting, we also appreciated the need for regular engagement by the hands of court, and we welcome the institutionalization of the hands of court consultative meeting as an annual event in the judiciary's calendar. This was the first, but we will be doing it regularly. That is all. Thank you very much for attending.